Welcome to another episode of Long Days. This is the first guest. I wanted my first guest to be the hilarious Mark Norman, and I scored him even though I had to take a plane back from Miami to get here. <laughs> <laughs> it's a long story, folks. I thought you moved to Miami. I don't know why. Here's the thing. We had a uh, we've had we had like a whole exchange, a whole text exchange. Yeah. For like that spanned like a couple weeks. Yep. And the whole time you thought I lived in Miami. Yes. Well, I was doing the Miami Improv, and I said, I saw you on Schultz. You got a little cheese in you. You know, you're a little swanky and dancey and <laughs> some kind of ethnicity. So I figured you moved down to Miami and it said, fuck these queefs up here. I'm going to Florida. And uh, I was wrong. So I said, oh, he'll, 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 he can open for me. You know, yeah. it'll be fun. You have some, you're ethnic, but you're more ethnic in like a French. Yes. Yeah. French little... kind of conquering, like a French kind of swing. But you're, the ones in Louisiana, were you guys like conquering French or were you more like French Revolution kind of egalite, liberté kind of French? I know you eat crawfish and it freaks me out. It's weird. I love it. You eat on it. newspapers like fucking Irish peasants. Yeah. Well, you do Asians out here stealing our whole peel thing with the, you know, you see them out there in the restaurant. They put the sauce right on the shell. Right. What are you doing, you crazy? Stop Asian hate. Stop crawfish hate. <laughs> Exactly. You guys are ruining it. But yeah, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I, my dad's like from France people, you know, Normandy, you yeah. know, it's right in there. So uh, then my mom's a big Sicilian cunt and uh, <laughs> it's that mix. And then ah. you throw some Cajun in there and a couple of blacks and you got me. <laughs> you know, it's interesting to, because, you, you know, um, I just have to say this, you know, um, how do I say this? Sing it, sister. I, I, I think <laughs> you know, if I was gay, yeah, which I'm not. Jeremy, um, that I would find you to be cute. Oh, thanks. All well, right. You're cute too. Have you heard my dick pic story? No. Maybe eight years ago, I hooked up with this gal and it was like this passionate weekend on the road. It was amazing. She was way out of my league. It was the highlight of my life. So we'd kind of communicate uh, after a few weeks uh, of me leaving, and she'd be like, send me a dick pic. Send her a dick pic, whatever, no big deal. Ah, eight months later, we stopped talking, whatever. Somebody d uh, uh, tweets at me, ats me, hey, is this your dick? And it was a photo of my dick. Some <laughs> random guy in like Minnesota. But a good photo, no less. Yeah, but it's still my dick, so it's not great. But I saw my sheets, and that's what did it. I was like, ah, those are my dinosaur <laughs> sheets. And so... Uh, that's my race car bed. I know that bed anywhere. Yeah, I just didn't respond, and it kind of f you know, flew off into the Twitter ether. But uh, Jesus, seeing your own dick on a public platform is terrifying. That's a bummer. It's and a you bummer. know it was mine. Well, you got a nice penis, though. It's all right. It's fine. It's a, it's a Civic. It's a Civic. Yeah, it's like it a, it'll get you places. It's reliable, but yeah. uh, you know, it's not going to win a race. What is this LGBTQQIP2SA? Is this one of Elon Musk's new kids' names? What is this? <laughs> Lesbian, gay, bisexual. Okay, so LGBTQQIP2SAA stands for lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, questioning, queer, intersex, pansexual, two-spirit, androgynous, and asexual. Two-spirit is a term used by some indigenous North Americans to describe those who fulfill a traditional third gender ceremonial <laughs> role. The local democracy reporting service said this is what the guy Maxi was. Remember, our, we had a, we had a guest on the show, Max. He was a he's like a hair and makeup guy that I know in here. He said he's like a he's a two spirit. He's a two spirit indigenous two spirit. Yeah, he's a two spirit. He's just he doesn't know what he is. He said every day I wake up and I'm a different one of the letters. Whoa, yeah. man, that's gotta be a, that's so exhausting. Yeah. I, I just you know jerk off to whatever gets me going that day. Same whether as me, dude. Yeah, that's, whether it's I, a relative or, or or a hobo, whatever I know, it is. That, that's how I feel. It's like sometimes I'm watching like, you know, like whatever, like lesbian porn. Sometimes I'm watching porn that looks like my wife. And then the other day I was, I jerked off to Wade Boggs because I was just, <laughs> <laughs> I, I was just, I was just reminiscing about the good old Yankee days when he was sure. riding around the horse. And I just, it was turning me on his, you know, his butt bouncing her up in those pinstripes. I miss baseball. Yeah, you know? yeah. Well, it's trying to skew younger, yes. and and I've jerked off to your wife as well. So yeah, we, we, it's all full circle. Clip it, clip um, it. But yeah, pansexual. That's somebody who doesn't want the pandemic to end. Whatever accomplishments you I I had were what she considered just baseline. Right. You had to do. But do you think that made you better? It made me sadder. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's nothing about that experience that made me, that catapulted me into anything but like a broken person. <laughs> I hear you. You don't look at those medals and go, hey, that was pretty good. Yeah. Damn. Nothing, nothing. Can I have them? 
<laughs> you can have, oh my god, one of them is gold plated. You want what? one? Yeah, hell yeah. yeah I won the I won the Southeast Asian Games. I won two gold medals. What? I'll give them to you. No, don't give them to me, Mark. Sell them. No all take them. Take them, Mark. No offense, but. You don't look like no athlete to me. No, I'm not. I was a skateboard <laughs> kid. You were? Oh, big time. That was my whole life. Wait, wait, wait. You're a skater? I was. I mean, I'm old now, but... Yeah, but so boy, back... Because, you know, I grew up... I, well, I just a second. All right, don't. Oh, no. Please don't. Please don't. All right. I'm a poser. Uh, please don't. Please. He even opened up a skate shop but can't skate. Uh, I opened up a skate uh, shop, right? Oh, uh, what and, a dweeb. And, yeah, and... You know, <laughs> Come on, man. Come on, man. Look at my body. Well, that's now you're 61. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Whoever said Asian that's don't true. raisin. <laughs> that's true. I'm joking. You look great even though you're coming out of your shirt at the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Please keep it coming. I'm but, sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah. I love being ripped on. Here we go. Law 45. Hold Preach on. the need for change, but never reform too much at once. Judgment. Everyone understands the need for change in the abstract, but the day-to-day -day level people are creatures of habit. Too much innovation is traumatic and will lead to revolt. If you are new to a position of power or an outsider trying to build a power base, make a show of respecting the old way of doing things. That's if true. If change is necessary, make it feel like a gentle improvement on the past. That's brilliant there shit. There you go. There you go. Some, some kid needs to uh, translate that into like millennial yeah. Gen Z talk. Like, yo fam, it's lit when you're yourself. Fucking. You know, or some <laughs> bullshit just so everybody gets it because I think it's a little too heavy handed sometimes, but it's all brilliant. Oh, fuck. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then you do it. But people and... are doing it for you. You're very popular on TikTok. Oh, really? Yeah, there's so many just viral videos. That's of you. Steve Byrne. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, that's Steve. But um, yeah, that, that's kind of flattering when someone else does that. I've had people like mimic my act or lip sync it, and you're like, oh, that's cool. Fun. Somebody's yeah. watching, somebody gives a shit enough to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, is like, do you want to do acting or anything like nah, that? I can't act. It's not good. <laughs> I just don't care. <laughs> I had to do a, I've done a million, I've done a million auditions, I've never gotten one. And I had to do one where my dad died uh -huh. next to me on the couch, and they threw me out of the room. Oh, that bad. Oh, really? They were like, get out of here. What are you doing? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, dad, what are you, crazy? <laughs> <laughs> what are you dying on us? Yeah, yeah, Jeez, Louise. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they were like, all right, you're wasting our time. I was like, I drove here from Santa Monica. It took three hours. You know? uh, yeah. We did the March Madness uh, yeah. competition, which they used to do at this Caroline's Comedy Club. It's like the first thing that like I ever did, like the first time like I ever got my name in the paper or like ever right. got like appreciated by like a comedy club owner. But they starts out with sixty four comics, and you all do a minute joke or thirty second joke, and it's like the audience votes, claps, yeah, who's moving tough. on, who's moving on. Or actually, no, at that point I think it was a panel of judges. It was yes. it was the owner of the of the club, Caroline Hirsch, the, the booker, booker Louis Ferranda, and then they would have like an agent or yeah, whatever, yeah. and then so. That's how you move on. So like, wow, I, I forgot about this. I was one hundred percent like completely like brand new into comedy. Been doing it a year or two. Like killing I, it though. I knew some of these guys, but like nobody. Like I never like the clubs. Nobody had ever an agent. Never heard of me. A manager never heard of me. But I went all the way to the elite eight of this tournament. It's and a bracket system. It's a bracket system. I kept competing. winning. I kept winning and and winning this thing. And I was like, oh shit! Like I've got. And it was the final eight. It was like me, Norman, Sam Morrell. I think Nick. Uh, this guy Nick Cobb. Oh yeah. Phoebe Cobb. Robinson. Yeah. Was there? And then I forgot the other ones. But anyway, my mom said you were one of her favorites. She always what? she always remembered you. You, you Sam Morrell. She liked, and then Harrison Greenbaum. Well, he's a gay. Yeah. But, <laughs> no, he's a nice kid. But, uh, but he's gay. That was a wild time, and it was me and you, I think, at the end. I at think the it was end, neck yeah. to neck. Well, well, then one year I got all the way to the championship, and it was me versus Norman, and Norman won the scumbag. Yeah. He beat that, me. That was a big deal. That was like one and two right there. Yeah, and, and what, did you, what did you? I forgot what you won. Nothing crazy, right? You was get it? like 200 bucks and a, and, a, and a fleshlight or something ridiculous, <laughs> you know? But you know how uh -oh. cheap Caroline's is. But yeah, that was a big deal and i had like a little i got a little misty after yeah uh oh i just heard my mom whisper what's a flashlight oh. uh, <laughs> i'll send her one i got a million of them <laughs> i had a question for mark what's the worst comedy gig you've ever lived what's the what the worst comedy gig oh my god the worst gig ever probably like i've done a million corporates 
And I've told this story before, but I got this big gig because Seinfeld shouted me out. And once Seinfeld did Met, that... I was at the Mets game he shouted you out at. That's crazy. I was crazy. sitting in the stands. Wow. How crazy is that? I was at the freaking Mets game that he... Sh- he Have shot- you told the story about how he doesn't call you anymore? Oh, yeah, yeah. We, okay, did, okay. Yeah, we did it. We did it on... Uh, we did... I, I have a... For the $25 members at patreon.com slash Christy Comedy, we do a thing called the Chris and Eddie show. I call it Edibles Eddie's, where uh, I take an edible with Homeless Pimp, and then they wait 30 minutes, and then I do the show on Eddie's. And we uh, call it the Chris and Eddie show, and holy. I told... Told the star shit. started reading texts on the Patreon oh, from Seinfeld. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's wild! That's wild, dude. And I was like, oh boy. So Pip was like, put it at the twenty-five level. That's how we thought of the idea because I was like, we got to put it out, right? He was like, yeah, but dude, you started reading Seinfeld texts. Yeah, oh, and I was like, what god. do we do? He's like, what if we put it at the twenty-five dollar level? I was like, all right, yeah, let's give a name. And he was like, well, you took edibles. I was like, uh, the Chris and Eddie show. He's like, oh. perfect. You get to the thirty dollar. It's Cosby text. Oh yeah, yeah, but, dude. Oh yeah, I'll start. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, so you know, it's crazy. He's shouting me out, yeah. whatever, and it didn't do shit for my career. I thought, oh, I'll be selling out the next day. That's, didn't make a blip. Yeah, I mean, it was good for me. And my mom fingered herself and all that. But other than that, it was. Uh, hey, mom. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, she knows. She's done it. And uh, <laughs> yeah. So uh, what was I saying? Sorry, your mom's oh, distracting Jesus. me. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, but what it did do was these corporates hit me up like, who's this whiz kid that Seinfeld's talking about, you know? Sure. And so I got hired by all these giant pharmaceutical <laughs> Ford oh, Motor Company. Money, 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 money. Money, money was a good year. Yeah. And I bombed every single one of them. But this one in particular, they bought me a tuxedo. They got me a limo to Philadelphia in this beautiful ballroom. It was a drug company. It was like the uh, the, the Oscars for uh, drugs. Right. For like pills and Pfizer and all this shit. And it was a three-hour thing. I was supposed to do 15 minutes up top. And actually, you know, Jimmy Kimlin, do the award show. Sure. Ellen DeGeneres, whatever it was. Billy Crystal. So I bombed the first 15 minutes. This is like the biggest gig of my life. This How many is, people are there, cards. would you say, roughly? Huh? How many people? I don't know, 600 in a Ooh. ballroom, tuxedo. It's oh. like, that's the guy who owns routers, and that's the guy who invented the iPhone. Harvey Weinstein. Six. Yeah, all yeah. those guys were there. The whole thing. Yeah. Al Gore. It was crazy. <laughs> oh, my God. I know. And so I got to do all the, you know, the best uh, antidepressant goes to the do da da You know, all the, the drugs that sound like black women's names. And <laughs> so I'm in the tuxedo. I go up. They hate me already. I got to eat dinner with them too and right. then they go Mark Norman the host and I go up there but ba ba there's a big podium and everything and the first 15 minutes I die zero zero and I'm doing tonight's show like testing no, Norman, material you got great if you if you ask Mark to do his A stuff it's killer shit oh thanks yeah. and obviously clean and all that so yeah. I was like man this is a tough group but I did one joke about a, a vibrator but it's very clean it's just I mentioned the word vibrator once I see a woman get up in the back uh. she walks out <laughs> I go, ah, whatever, she's probably menstruating or miscarriaging or whatever it is. And then I go back, uh, you know, to my act, blah, 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 bombing, whatever. Then we go into the award show, and I'm bringing up, oh, this guy won. He comes up, says his little thing with the trophy. I make fun of him, and then they didn't like that. So at one point, somebody's giving a speech, and I have to, I have a moment off to the side, and this lady in a headset's like, get over here, get over here. She's like... You pissed off the CEO's wife. She's furious. She's chewing him out in the lobby. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen, but it ain't pretty. And she's kind of crying a little bit. I'm like, what is going on? So I go back up there. I'm like, hey, the award for uh, the best diarrhea pill goes to this guy. So he comes out. And then they bring me back. They're like, you're fired. He's pissed. The CEO is yelling at me. He's like, how could you say that? My wife is furious. You're such a misogynist. I'm like, what are you talking about? This is all Tonight Show stuff. Yeah. And I I was like, I hope for Seinfeld with this. He's like, "You're, you're a disgrace. You should be ashamed of yourself. They fired me. They made me return the tuxedo. They gave the stack of cards to some random Indian guy, and he had to host the rest, and they sent me home. What? Yeah. Did you get paid? I had to fight for it, but I got like half the money.